Today I'll be talking to you about the thyroid nodules. And uh, the reason I'm, I'm, I want to talk about this subject is that it's very common. Uh, we see it a lot in our clinics and we see up to 10 to 20% of the patients in our clinic uh, having uh, some pain or swelling or difficulty swallow, swallowing. Uh, what are the etiologies of those nodules? How, how common are they and uh, how, do, how do we manage them uh, will be the subject of my topic today. Uh, but first of all, I want to start talking about what is the thyroid gland. The thyroid gland is a gland in the middle of the neck that is responsible of producing the thyroid hormones. And uh, the thyroid nodules are uh, uh, oval uh, or round-shaped growth inside uh, the thyroid gland. And uh, again, they are very common and uh, they can be cystic or solid. And when I say cystic, I mean uh, a fluid sac. Uh, and when I say solid, it's just a solid uh, uh, nodule. How common are they? They are very common. Uh, if we, in, in the past, we used to think that they are only 6% or 10% uh, of uh, people have uh, uh, those nodules uh, based on only uh, physical exam. But uh, later on, after uh, starting doing the uh, more uh, uh, radiologic uh, investigations and doing more ultrasound, CT scans, we found out that those nodules can be as common as uh, 40 to 50 percent of the general population. Uh, but we have always to, uh, to keep in our mind that in very rare cases, uh, they might be uh, harmful and uh, we have always to rule out uh, uh, cancer. Uh, in those nodules. What are the symptoms of those nodules? What symptoms, uh, what do we expect to have when, when we have those nodules? Uh, first of all, uh, the, first, the first symptom I want to talk about is uh, physical. Uh, the patient will feel uh, some lump or some swelling in their neck. And that's very easy to be detected because they will be like uh, looking at the mirror or just putting their hand in their necks and then they'll feel that there's some protrusion from their neck. The second uh, uh, symptom that we can see if, if, there is, if the nodule is so big and uh, the thyroid is uh, also big at the same time and it's compressing on the uh, trachea or the windpipe or compressing on the esophagus which is the uh, food tube that will cause some symptoms like difficulty swallowing or uh, shortness of breath and those uh, usually uh, detected by the patient and the patient would be presenting uh, complaining about those symptoms. Uh, I just want to mention something here very important that most of the people who come to us though with the difficulty swallowing and pain in their neck and uh, shortness of breath uh, have nothing uh, in their thyroid and the thyroid has nothing to, nothing to do with their symptoms. Uh, the third uh, manifestation, sometimes those nodules uh, produce too much thyroid hormone. So when they th produce too much thyroid hormone, they present with the manifestation of excessive uh, thyroid hormone production, which is like uh, uh, heart racing, they present with uh, sweating, uh, losing weight, they can be having also some frequent bowel movement. So those symptoms are not secondary to the nodule itself, it's secondary to the production of excessive hormone produced by that nodule, and this is the way the patient presents in some cases. Now I'll be talking about uh, what are the etiologies and what are the risk factors of those uh, thyroid nodules. Mostly those thyroid nodules are uh, uh, benign. 95% uh, of the cases are benign. Uh, it depends on the, on the book you read and the study you go through or the Google, because I know a lot of people like to Google. Sometimes they say 20%, sometimes they even say more, sometimes they say 13%, but in fact, only 2% uh, to 6.5% of those nodules are cancer, and most of the rest are uh, uh, benign. So the most common cause of nodules are benign, 95% and uh, mostly they are multinodular goiter or secondary to Hashimoto disease, which is an autoimmune thyroid disease that can lead to that uh, uh, formation of the nodules, or it can be follicular neoplasm, benign, of course, not cancerous. Uh, so these are mostly benign causes of, of, of uh, having thyroid nodule or nodularity in the thyroid. The cancer part, which is the cancer etiology of thyroid nodules, which is only two to 6.5%, as I mentioned before, Mostly it's because of papillary thyroid cancer. Uh, that's number one cause of thyroid cancer. Uh, follicular thyroid cancer, medullary thyroid cancer, and uh, 
sometimes we have some lymphoma uh, in the thyroid. And sometimes it could, could be metastatic from different kind of cancer uh, uh, going into the thyroid gland. Besides that, there are other risk factors and etiologies associated with the formation of thyroid nodules and increase the risk of formation of thyroid nodules. One of them is uh, if you have uh, smoking history. So that will increase uh, the chance of uh, developing thyroid nodules. If we have alcohol consumption, if we have obesity and metabolic syndrome, all these etiologies and risk factors are associated with the increase of risk factor of developing uh, thyroid uh, nodules. Uh, if we have uh, increase in the growth hormone factor, IGF-1 level, which is uh, also can be associated uh, uh, with the increased uh, uh, risk of uh, formation of thyroid nodules. Uh, women with fibroids in their uterus ha are at higher risk of developing uh, thyroid uh, nodules. On the other side, there are some things, some, some factors that decrease the risk of developing uh, thyroid nodules. One of them is using oral contraceptives in the females, and the other one is using, using statins by, by patients. Both those uh, factors can lead to decrease the risk of developing thyroid nodules. We don't know why, how, but we just know that those two are associated with the decrease of risk of developing thyroid nodules. As I, as I mentioned before also that uh, the risk of cancer in those nodules is uh, very minimum and uh, it's only between 2 and 6.5%. Uh, there are also some risk factors that are associated with the increase of the possibility and risk of having thyroid cancer in those nodules. The first one is being a child. So kids with nodules are at higher risk of having thyroid cancer. The second, the second more, more, most important one is the age. So people at the age of less than 30 or older than 60 are at higher risk of having thyroid cancer in those nodules compared to people in the age between 30 and 60. So younger than 30, older than 60 are at higher risk. Also, we have a history of radiation. For people who had radiation, in the past they used to use a lot of radiation to treat the uh, tonsils or the thymus, and people, uh, kids were exposed to those radiation. These are factors, risk factors, to develop thyroid cancer in the future in the nodules. And the last one is if you have a strong family history of thyroid cancer. So people with a strong family history of thyroid cancers are at higher risk of having cancer in these nodules. But we have to always keep in mind Still, the risk of cancer in those patients with thyroid nodules is only 2 to 6.5%. Most of the patients come to us and their major concern is, do we have cancer? Is it cancer? What do we do? I want to emphasize on one thing very importantly. The risk of cancer is very minimum, 5%, 6.5%. Most of the cases are benign. Most of the cases are har harmless. Most of the cases go even asymptomatic. Most of the cases, the patient live all their lives and die without even knowing that they have thyroid nodules. All what we have to know at this time, the nodules are very common. They can be up to 40, 50%, in some literature, 60%, 70% of the, pop the popular general population. Very common mostly harmless. The only thing we have to make sure, they're not cancer, or they're not producing too much hormone, as I mentioned before, or they're not any, causing any compressive symptoms, interfering with the daily activity, especially breathing and uh, eating.